Good morning everyone. Today we are going to start lesson 11 of your book that is rise of fascism in Italy. And this ideology spread in Italy in 1922 and lasted before the Second World War 1939. Let us first discuss the objectives of the topic. Italy's post-war discontent and rise of Mussolini to power. We will discuss why Italy was not happy with the Treaty of Versailles of 1919 and how did Mussolini come to power in Italy. Then we will discuss why was Mussolini able to come to power, the reasons behind the rise of fascism, the rule of Mussolini from 1922 till 1943 and what were the main policies which were adopted by Mussolini. Then we will discuss the main feature of Mussolini's domestic policy, his home policy, and finally we will discuss the economic policy of Mussolini. What sort of reforms were introduced by Mussolini to help Italian economy to come out of economic crisis after the First World War? Let us first discuss the new terms of the topic. Fascist. The National Fascist Party or Perito was an Italian political party created by Benito Mussolini in 1922 due to the failure of democratic government students after the first world war democracy for the first time was established in italy but it was not successful in solving the economic and social problems of the people so opportunity was grabbed by a person called Benito Mussolini who was earlier a journalist he formed a new party in italy called as the perito or the fascist party it was formed in 1922 the next term is fascism a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power forcibly suppressing opposition and emphasizing on aggressive nationalism and racism So, fascism is a type of government in which a dictator rules over the country. Generally, the opposition parties doesn't have any role in this type of government and opposition is mostly crushed. The dictator promotes aggressive nationalism. That means the feeling of loving one's country but hating other country. This sort of government also promote racism. Racism is a feeling of being superior as compared to the other nationalities secret treaty of london treaty of london april 26 1915 was a secret treaty between neutral italy and allied forces of france britain and russia to bring italy into world war 1 initially when world war 1 was started italy decided not to be part of any group by the secret treaty of london which was signed between italy on one side and the allied forces of france britain and russia italy was also brought into the first world war on the side of the allied forces italy was promised trieste southern tyrol northern dalmatia and other territories in return for pledge to enter the war within a month it was decided that if italy would join the first world war on the side of the allied these territories like trieste southern tyrol and northern dalmatia would be handed over to italy the next word is allied powers the group led by france britain russia italy japan and united states against the central powers of germany austria hungary the ottoman empire the bulgarian during the first world war students the first world war was fought between two groups one was allied which comprised of france britain russia italy was brought to it by the secret treaty of london and later on japan also joined united states joined this group in 1917 the second group was central powers where the main leader was germany other than germany the other countries were austria hungary the ottoman empire that is turkey and bulgaria the next term is factor from 1922 the appointed prime minister in italy was called as factor 
So the position of prime minister in Italy from 1922 was known as facta. The next word is parliamentary system. The system of government in which executive that is ruling party is responsible to legislature. In this type of government, executive rule as long as they enjoy majority vote in the legislature. The next word is battle of wheat. The battle for grain was an economic policy undertaken by the fascist in Italy during 1920s as a move towards a Turkey. Now what was battle of wheat it was a economic policy of Mussolini in order to increase the productivity of grain. The next word is a Turkey. A country, state or society which is economically independent and doesn't have to depend on other economies or countries for raw materials the next word is treaty of lateran the lateran treaty was the agreement which was signed in the lateran palace in rome on 11th of february 1929 by italy and pope in which he recognized the vatican city as a sovereign and independent papal state Papal state is a state which is ruled by pope. The next term is sovereign. A supreme ruler, especially a monarch. Sovereign is a ruler who have complete authority and whose words cannot be challenged. That means every word which is spoken from the mouth of the sovereign automatically becomes law. The example of sovereign were Hitler Mussolini and at present we can say the queen elizabeth of uk but students you must realize that there is difference between the queen elizabeth being a sovereign and hitler and dictators being a sovereign queen elizabeth is constitutional head of her country she has been given the power of being sovereign but in actual sense she doesn't exercise this power as in england there is parliamentary democracy where prime minister is more stronger as compared to the queen so queen is a constitutional sovereign of england and mussolini and hitlers were the real sovereign in their respective countries the next word is catholicism the faith practice and church order of roman catholic church that is conservative christians those who were the followers of catholicism did not believe in protestant church now what is protestants protestants were progressive christians who did not believe in pope whereas the catholics followed pope blindly students there are two sects in christianity one belong to catholic and second belong to protestant the catholics had been regarded as the conservative christians who believed in pope whereas the protestants are the more progressive christians who only believed in bible and the teachings of jesus christ and they don't follow pope if we see the european countries at present the people of england italy france spain are catholics and they believe in the old customs and tradition whereas americans canadians australians are protestant who are regarded as progressive christians now let us discuss italy during the first world war what was the economic social and political condition of italy during the first world war political scenario during the first world war when world war 1 began in july 1914 italy was a partner in the triple alliance with germany and austria hungary but decided to remain neutral during the immediate pre war years italy started aligning itself closer to the entente pass france and great britain for military and economic support that means when the first world war started italy decided that it would not take part in the first world war though it was in the side of germany and austria hungary as in 1914 it had signed an alliance with germany and austria hungary called as the triple alliance but with the passage of time it got more inclined towards the allied powers 
the main countries of the allied or the entente powers were france and great britain and why italy got more closer to them because italy wanted military and economic support for the progress of its country let us understand the political scenario of the first world war through a map on your screen you can see the member countries of triple alliance in 1882 germany austria hungary and italy signed an agreement called as the triple alliance the member countries were germany austria hungary and italy and against this alliance triple entente was formed between russia france and britain later on some smaller countries like belgium serbia and the seven balkan states also joined the triple entente later on italy changed her side the first world war was fought between two groups the allied powers and the central powers the members of allied power are represented with red color on your screen the major countries in allied powers were england france the russian empire and italy which joined this group due to secret treaty of london the second group was central powers which contained the german empire austria hungary and muslim empire called as turkish empire the allied powers held out that if italy withdrew her support to her allies like germany and austria she would get trent triste istria dalmatia and well known territories of germany and the turkish empire in africa these offers included in the secret treaty of london of april 1915 were so tempting that italy could not deny to accept it italy took part in the first world war on the side of the allies on the basis of the secret treaty of london so italy who decided in the initial years of first world war that it would remain neutral suddenly joined the first world war and that also to the side that nobody was expecting as earlier in 1882 italy had joined a pact with germany and austria hungary called as the triple alliance so nobody was expecting that italy would join the first world war on a light side but by the secret treaty of london italy joined the first world war on the side of the allied powers so secret treaty of london was signed on may 23 1915 italy declared war on austria hungary its traditional friend entering first world war on the side of the allies britain france and russia after signing the secret treaty of london so with the promise which was done by britain with italy that italy would get the important part of germany and turkish empire in africa and also istria triste trentino which were there on the boundaries of austria hungary and croatia italy decided that it would also join the first world war on side of the allied powers according to the secret treaty of london which was signed in 1915 it was decided that if italy would change her side from central powers to allied in return she would be handed over the part of trentino you can see on your screen trentino and also the austrian lands and both these parts were the part of austrian hungarian empire in the secret treaty of london it was decided that if italy would join the first world war on the side of the allied powers she would be handed over istria and dalmatia or better known as dalmatia so the treaty of london was very important which was signed in 1915 it was a secret agreement between britain and italy Britain declared that Italy would get Adriatic coast, Tyrol, Trentino, Trieste, Dalmatia. Everybody knew Italy changed sides, but the details were a secret. That what was the reason that Italy changed her side? Why did Italy change side in World War One? 
in 1911 during the Italy Turkish war over Libya Italy asked over military assistance from her allies Austria and Germany Both Austria and Germany refused to help Italy on the ground that alliance was only for defense purpose in case of any of three nations got attacked so Italy was not provided help when she required both her allied countries like germany and austria said that alliance of austria germany and italy was only on that condition when any country would join three countries together in that case italy was looking for an opportunity that was provided by britain in form of secret treaty of london Italian military in the first world war at the beginning of the war the italian army boasted of less than 3 lakh men but mobilization generally increased its size to more than 5 million by war's end in november 1918 approximately 4 lakh 60000 were killed and 9 lakh 55000 were wounded in the conflict economic condition of italy during the first world war italy was economically weak primarily due to lack of domestic raw material resources italy had very limited coal reserves and no domestic oil the economy in terms of gdp or gross domestic product grew about 7% from 1914 to 1918 that was the period of the first world war while the german economy grew at 11% the war saw a decline of civilian consumption and investment by the industrialist so economy of italy was totally shattered during the first world war the amount of goods and services produced in country were not sold as the demand of the people was low people were not having money to buy the luxurious goods even for the necessities also they were struggling as the demand for the different products but low in the market industrialist did not make any investment so it resulted into zero investment in italian economy now let us discuss what was the condition of italy after the first world war we will specially discuss italy's dissatisfaction with the treaty of versailles the treaty of versailles was signed in 1919 Italy was a part of the winning group but still it was not satisfied with the terms of the treaty let us discuss why Italy was not satisfied with the treaty of versailles before discussing why Italy was not happy with the treaty of versailles we should discuss that what actually the treaty of versailles has offered to italy so in the final treaty of versailles signed in june italy received a permanent seat in the league of nations students league of nations was the organization which was formed after the first world war to maintain international peace and security as italy was a member of the winning group so italy got a permanent seat in the council of the league council of the league of nations then italy also got the tyrol tyrol was a part of croatia Italy also got share of German reparation that means after the first world war the war tax or the war indemnity which was imposed on Germany a part of that was paid to Italy Italy was unhappy because she joined the allies in the first world war at the last minute hoping to gain land after winning the war the reason that Italy joined the first world war on the light side was that she wanted to gain some territories of the german empire the italians did not get what had been promised at the treaty of london students earlier in this module only we have discussed the terms of the treaty of london we have discussed the areas like trent triste istria dalmatia and a share of german and turkish empire in africa with the regions which were promised to italy after the first world war by the secret treaty of london as italy was not given these areas 
it caused resentment in Italy, especially at the losses Italy had endured fighting for the Allies. Lots of soldiers of Italy had died during the First World War. She believed that she had played an active role in the First World War, but she had got nothing from the Treaty of Versailles. According to the Paris Peace Conference, Italy got a permanent seat in the League of Nations, Dalmatia region and share of German war reparation. In fact, Italy got very little at Versailles. The Italian public believed that her leaders had been humiliated. As the big three leaders, President Wilson of America, Leo George of Britain, and French President Clemenceau were given more importance but ignored the Italian delegation who were seen as secondary figures at Versailles. Students, Orlando was the Prime Minister of Italy during the Paris Peace Conference, but he was not given any importance in the Treaty of Versailles final settlement. All the terms of the Treaty of Versailles were decided by the big three leaders from America, France and Britain. Hence, Italians were of view that they have been humiliated by the Treaty of Versailles. After the First World War, there was economic crisis in Italy. Italy had emerged from World War I in a poor and weakened condition, and after the war suffered inflation, massive debts and an extended depression. So after the First World War, there was huge level of inflation in Italy. Inflation is a state where the prices of different commodities are continuously rising. Italy was under huge economic pressure. By 1920, the economy was in a massive conversion with mass unemployment, food shortages, strikes and so on. As other countries, Italy also became victor of economic crisis. There was huge level of unemployment in Italy. There was also a shortage of food and Italy had to depend on other countries to fulfill its shortage of food. People started resorting to strikes against the government. The national debt had increased a lot. The price and the value of money decreased. There was a general shortage of food grains in country and unemployment was increasing day by day. The condition of middle class people, farmers and working class became very critical as a result of the war. Italy suffered a lot and her people became very poor and the conditions deteriorated. The decision of Italy to join the First World War after signing the secret treaty of London proved a blunder. Economically, Italy was under great pressure. There was shortage of food grains in the country. People started doing strikes against the government. The middle class and the poor peasants were not happy with the government as their condition was very critical. The value of money decreased in the market. There was literally no investment and no saving by the people. Italy after World War I has to face many economic problems. The main problems of Italy were high inflation, that is increase in the prices of commodities, high unemployment level, trade decrease as the demand for different commodities fall in the market, high taxes were imposed by the government in order to pay for the national debt, then the worker strikes were led by the communists. After the First World War, Italy experienced political instability. In 1919, democracy first time was introduced in Italy. Since no single party could gain a clear-cut majority in the election, so there was a complete instability between 1919 and 1922. Six coalition governments were formed in Italy. And here, by coalition government, we mean to say government formed by more than one party. Each government had its own policy and there was no continuity in their policies. From 1919 to 1922, six government had changed in Italy. So, there was lack of unanimity and uniformity in the policies of Italy. 
these governments that mean the coalition governments were not able to solve the problems of unemployment and poverty under these conditions when there was political instability in italy after the first world war economic crisis was also going on there was rise of a dictator called as mussolini so let's discuss how there was a rise of dictatorship of mussolini and how the fascism emerged in italy benito amilcare andrea mussolini who went by the nickname second deus here deus means the leader was an italian dictator who created the fascist party in 1919 and eventually held all the power in italy as country's prime minister from 1922 until 1943 Mussolini was an ardent socialist in his youth. Students, by here socialist word we mean to say a person who believe in classless society. That means Mussolini believed that there should not be a gap between the rich and the poor. He was expelled by the party for his support of World War 1. When he was a part of the socialist party He gave support to Italy's entry in the First World War and that was the reason that he was expelled from the Socialist Party. As dictator during World War II, he was eventually killed by his own people in Mezegra, Italy. The weak coalition governments of Italy could not follow any coherent national policy on post-war reconstruction of Italy. as we have earlier also discussed that there were coalition governments in italy after the first world war these governments were not having one single policy to run the country in this situation benito mussolini founded the italian fascist party in 1919 in 1921 elections the fascists captured 35 seats facta the last constitutional premier resigned on october 27 1922 students facta was the position of prime minister in italy so in 1922 he resigned from his post and mussolini took the decision to march on rome with his followers so when coalition governments were not able to solve the economic problems of the people facta the prime minister of italy resigned himself mussolini grabbed this opportunity and decided that he would capture rome now let's discuss what were the factors which gave rise to fascism or why there was rise of mussolini in italy mussolini founded the fascist party in italy the italian term fascist is derived from fascio which means bundle of royal sticks this was the name given to the political organization in italy fascism is a form of government that is ruled by an authoritarian ruler here by authoritarian we mean to say a dictatorial ruler who doesn't care for the viewpoint of the others fascist worked for a totalitarian one party state in fascist government there is generally one party rule and the dictator is the supreme so fascist were the political organizations which were already there in italy mussolini had just organized them and made them under one party called as fascist party and the new ideology of fascism started in italy The keystone of the fascist doctrine is its conception of the state of its essence its functions and its aim For fascism the state is absolute individuals and groups relative that means the fascism believe that state or the country is above and individual interest is subordinate to it The aim of the fascist government was to prepare the nation for armed conflict and to respond to economic difficulties fascism was a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power forcibly suppressing opposition and criticism regimenting all industry commerce and emphasizing on aggressive nationalism and racism 
द एम ऑफ द फास्ट गवर्नमेंट वॉज टू प्रिपेयर द कंट्री टू कम आउट ऑफ द इकनॉमिक क्राइसिस दैट इटली अंडर वेंट आफ्टर द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर सेकेंड एम ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ गवर्नमेंट वॉज टू प्रिपेयर इटली फॉर द आर्म्ड रेवोल्यूशन अगेंस्ट द अदर कंट्री सो दैट इटली कुड बी अगेन मेड अ वर्ल्ड पावर फासिज्म वॉज अ टाइप ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इन विच वन डिक्टेटर यूज टू रूल द कंट्री Mainly in this type of government the opposition was suppressed they were exiled or put to jail all the industries commerce trade was controlled by the government and government tried to impose aggressive nationalism that means government tried to encourage nationalism a love for one's country but at the same time the feeling of hatred to other countries the government encouraged the people and told the people that they were superior as a race as compared to their neighboring countries mussolini reached rome on october 30 1922 practically without any resistance that means when mussolini reached to rome to overthrow the position of the facta the king did not ask his army men to attack on mussolini king victor emmanuel who was the king of italy at that time made him the prime minister and mussolini formed the government the idea of fascist government was expressed by mussolini himself for fascism state is absolute individuals and groups relative the king victor emmanuel made mussolini as the prime minister or the factor of italy and mussolini made it clear that in fascism state interest is first and individual interest is secondary now let us discuss what were the reasons that led to rise of mussolini or fascism in italy the first reason that there was rise of fascism in italy was disappointment with the treaty of versailles the italians were not happy for the treatment they got from the paris peace conference the allied powers did not fulfill their promise which were assured to italy by the secret treaty of london students earlier also we have discussed the terms of the secret treaty of london it was told to italy that if italy would join the first world war on the side of allied powers she would be handed over the region of fium dalmatia istria and part of germany's empire in africa but it was not given it was not given those territories which was promised to it especially the port fium the paris peace conference handed fium port to yugoslavia rather than to italy italy wanted dalmatia the fium port istria triste and trentino from the treaty of versailles the italians were not given these territories so italians believed that the treaty had dealt with them very badly italy had not been given the land promised at the secret treaty of london the second reason of rise of mussolini in italy was economic crisis after the first world war economic effect of the first world war were disastrous the government of italy faced number of problems which were beyond its capacity to solve as full europe was infected by the problem of economic depression the restrictions in international trade severely affected italian trade with other countries the value of italian currency rapidly declined factories were closed and the banks decided to restrict credit facility here by credit facility we mean to say the supply of money so unemployment was there money circulation was zero in the economy investment savings and demands all were zero there was huge number of urban population which were without work and they were demanding work from italian government the italian government had to repay huge loan they received from america italy was now full of disorder and discontent arising mostly from economic and financial hardship the cost of living became very high unemployment increased and labor strikes spread all over the country like all other european countries italy had also taken loan from america during the first world war 
Now it had to pay back the loan with high rate of interest. Unemployment was on its peak in Italy. The laborers started doing strikes against the mill workers and the government for less salaries or wages they were getting for their work. After the First World War, 4,60,000 soldiers of Italy died. Italy was under heavy debts. Coalition governments were there, which were unable to solve the economic problem of the people. There was rising level of unemployment. The value of the Italian currency, that is lira, was decreasing. There were shortages of food and coal. Peasants seized land from the wealthy. Workers started doing strikes against the government. In short, there was complete disorder and lawlessness in Italy. Growing contempt for the parliamentary system. Another reason why there was rise of Mussolini in Italy was the contempt of the people against the parliamentary system. Italians were not used to parliamentary system. They always loved monarchy system. First time after the First World War, on the request of America, democracy was established in Italy. According to this, votes for all men and proportional representation were introduced for 1919 election. That means the voting was done by the universal adult franchise and it was in accordance to the population of Italy. As a result, at least nine political parties were seen in the House. No stable government was formed and the coalition ministry was formed to rule the country. Since no single party was able to get majority in the election, so coalition government, which means government more than one party, was formed. But even these coalition governments were not stable. Governments kept on changing from time to time. As a result, there was no consistent policy. No consistent policy could be pursued and one after another, ministries came and were dissolved. People gradually lost faith in the parliamentary form of government, which failed to satisfy the demands of the people. In short, due to lack of majority party in the parliament, there were unstable governments in Italy. There was no uniformity in the policies of the coalition governments, so Italians were not happy with the working of the democratic parliamentary governments. The next reason for the rise of fascism in Italy was the wave of strikes. As there was no stable government in many areas, particularly in the industrial regions of north, there were very serious labor strikes. In some cases, the workmen seized the factories. The peasantry was also very much affected and they ousted the landlords and seized their property. The Italian government failed to protect the private property of the citizens. The peasants were against the economic policies of the liberal government. They started attacking on the private property of the landlords. Similarly, the workers also seized many factories and attacked on the private property of the capitalist. In such a situation, the liberal government was unable to protect the private properties of the capitalist and the landowners. So the government became unpopular between peasants, workmen, capitalists as well as in the eyes of the landowners. A social revolution was threatening the country. Because all the sections of the society, like peasants, workmen, industrialists and landowners were against the liberal government, so there was a threat that social awakening, social revolution could any time come in Italy. When the Italian Communist Party was formed in 1921, for some years it looked as if Italy would become a communist country like Russia. Mussolini grabbed this opportunity and started his own party called as the Fascist Party in Italy. As he was knowing that people wanted a strong leadership and he was the one who came ahead and provided bold leadership to Italy in international sphere. Students, one more reason that why there was rise of Mussolini in Italy was the public support with Mussolini.
After the First World War, Italy needed a bold leadership. But the government under Niti and then Giolitti proved incapable of dealing with the situation. Students, I have already discussed with you that there had been six coalition governments in Italy after the First World War. These coalition governments were led by different leaders. And amongst those different leaders, the noticeable leaders were Niti and Giolitti. These governments under these prominent leaders proved ineffective. They were not able to deal the economic crisis of Italy. In this situation, Mussolini and his fascist party gradually attracted many sections of society because he wanted to rescue the country from unstable and feeble government. So Mussolini promised the people that if they would support him, he would again make Italy a world power. As Mussolini was a good orator, people got influenced by his speech. And this also became a vital reason for rise of fascism in Italy. The next reason for the rise of fascism in Italy was the support of the king. Many historians believe that the regular army of Italy could easily disperse the supporter of Mussolini who were poorly armed. The king lost confidence in Fecta and the Prime Minister of Italy, Giolitti. And now let us discuss the rule of Mussolini from 29 October 1922 to just before the ending of the Second World War, 1943. As Italy was going through the phase of economic crisis, so the first target of Mussolini was to help Italy to come out of the economic crisis. In order to help Italian economy to come out of economic crisis, Mussolini regulated international trade. Mussolini balanced the budget, stabilized the currency and also adjusted the difference between labor and capital so that the two should act as a partners under the supervision of state. Mussolini put both the capitalist and the labor class under the control of the government. He ended the imbalance in the budget and increase the supply of money in the economy. Fascism always encouraged economic efficiency and thus steps were taken to reduce the country's dependence upon foreign import of wheat, cotton and tobacco. Shipping industry was developed to a great extent. Iron and steel production became double. And by 1930, artificial silk production had increased. The government took up the program of land reclamation to increase agricultural yield. Agriculture and industries were both the target area of Mussolini for development of economy of Italy. He laid special importance to the development of the shipping industry. Mussolini took many measures to increase the fertility of the soil so that the agricultural output could be increased. Now let us discuss what was the economic policy of Mussolini, due to which Italy was able to come out of the economic crisis which the European countries have faced after the First World War. The first part of economic policy was the battle of feet. Training of farmers and manufacture of fertilizers became an important program. Agricultural credit bank was established for benefit of the farmers. And the work of this agricultural credit bank was to give more and more loan to the farmers so that they could increase the agricultural productivity. The farmers were encouraged to join agricultural cooperatives where some rich peasants have set up these cooperatives with the assistance of the government. And the work of this cooperative was to help the farmers to increase the fertility of the soil. To modernize agriculture, number of hydroelectric power generating plants were built for quick electrification in rural areas. And by that, Mussolini also solved the purpose of giving employment to more and more people. The second work under the economic policy of Mussolini was the development of industries. In the industrial sector, Italian development was remarkable. Particularly, Italy enjoyed leading position in manufacturing of cars. Another important achievement was noticeable in the building of war vessels for several countries. 
but still italy was unable to be self sufficient because she had to depend on other countries for iron coal oil cotton and other articles which were vital for industrialization mussolini gave much importance to the development of industries and automobile industry was the most flourished industry during fascism other than that some other industries like shipping industries were also developed by mussolini the government also took up a program of public works which included building of roads bridges railway stations school new towns and electrification of main railway lines to reduce unemployment in the country by building infrastructure of italy mussolini tried to give more employment to the people so that the italian economy could be more developed now let us discuss domestic policy of mussolini The purpose of the domestic policy of Mussolini was to make state supreme and destroy all opposition completely. The opponents were either exiled or they were sent to some other places or they were murdered. Mussolini then introduced some changes in Italian constitution to make himself the supreme authority. So prime minister was given more authority and for that changes or amendments were made in the constitution of Italy. The prime minister was made responsible only to the king and not to the parliament and as we have discussed earlier in this session that king victor emmanuel always had been favored mussolini so that is the reason that prime minister was only made responsible to the king and not to the legislature the second feature of domestic policy of mussolini was no importance was given to parliament the prime minister would rule by decree or orders and the new rules would not be discussed in the parliament that means the work of the parliament was neglected even the rules were made by the prime minister parliament thus lost all its importance and became merely an advisory council of mussolini the next change was the reduction of voters from 10 millions to 3 millions only and student this is a characteristic of every dictatorial government in dictatorships public or people are not given more importance they have to accept the orders of their ruler so in order to reduce the importance of the people the number of the voters were also decreased from 10 million to only 3 millions the next feature of domestic policy of mussolini was strict censorship on newspaper and magazines the fascists did not tolerate any opposition and naturally strict censorship was enforced anti fascist newspapers or the newspapers who were publishing the views against fascism were banned the government controlled radios films and other organs of mass media and through this mass media fascism was encouraged Next is the control over education. The most important step of the government was to control and supervise the education and educational institutions. A strict vigilance or control was introduced in schools and universities. The teachers and the professors had to take an oath of loyalty to the fascist system. That means fascism encouraged education which encouraged the fascist ideology. the teachers were forced to wear uniform and the writers of the new textbooks were directed to write glorification of the fascist ideology every young people were supposed to join government youth organizations where they were taught the glorification of fascism that means education and mass media was used by mussolini to encourage fascist ideology in italy So in the domestic policy of Mussolini related to education some changes were made he appointed an intellectual gentile as education minister and the work of gentile was to make ensure that fascism flourished in italy syllabus was made such that the youth could be encouraged to follow fascist ideology young children were asked to adopt fascism as their ideology
नेक्स्ट फीचर ऑफ डोमेस्टिक पॉलिसी ऑफ मुसोलनी वॉज हिज सेटलमेंट ऑफ डिस्प्यूट विद पोप by the lateran treaty of 1929 the pope now recognized the kingdom of italy with rome as its capital there was a treaty signed between pope the religious head of the christians and between mussolini according to that pope accepted that the kingdom of italy that is the rule of mussolini as a sovereign and also accepted rome as its capital on the other hand the fascist government also recognized the vatican city as a sovereign state that means the vatican city could act as a sovereign state which would have control over its internal as well as external affairs and also accepted catholicism as official state religion students catholicism i have already discussed with you in the new terms stands for those christians who were conservative and not ready to accept changes and they also blindly followed whatever pope used to say mussolini made a religious instruction that is catholicism compulsory in all the schools the fascist thus made political use of catholicism and saw in it a valuable aid to their authority so religion was used as a agent by politician to make their authority more acceptable among the leaders of the world these are the sub topics we have covered in this module we have started our session with italy during the first world war we have discussed italy's political economic and military condition during the first world war where we have discussed that how italy decided to remain neutral in the beginning of the first world war but later on by signing the secret treaty of london it joined the allied side during the first world war italy was economically weak during first world war and military wise also it suffered a lot then we have discussed there was rise of mussolini in the italy as the coalition governments the liberal governments were not able to satisfy the demands of the people we have discussed the factors that led to rise of fascism under mussolini where we have discussed the discontent with the treaty of versailles where according to secret treaty of london italy was not given the territories which it was promised other than that economic crisis and dissatisfaction of the people with the government for also the factor which led to rise of fascism under mussolini and then we have discussed the domestic policy of mussolini where we have discussed that opposition was crushed there was only one party rule parliament authority was reduced and more importance was given to the prime minister and education and mass media both were used to encourage fascism and finally we have also discussed the economic policy of mussolini that both industrial as well as agricultural sectors were developed by mussolini in italy in order to help the economy of italy to come out of the crisis and to solve the problem of unemployment mussolini developed infrastructure of italy these are the questions we have covered in this module when was the treaty of london signed and what were its terms why was italy dissatisfied with the treaty of versailles what was the economic condition of italy after the first world war define fascism name the factors responsible for the rise of mussolini as dictator of italy mention the economic policy of mussolini describe the domestic policy of mussolini in italy if you want to search more on this topic you can see a youtube link on your screen you can click on it for getting more information on fascism and rise of mussolini in italy i hope this module have been fruitful for you with the help of this explanation and internet you are advised to make notes of this topic we'll meet you in next session till then have a nice day